Hello guys, it's Bible Scribe. Thank you for joining me. I have a testimony from a lady who had a very amazing spiritual experience. A brush with heaven, you might say. And uh, it, it really had a profound effect on her life. She reached out to me and said she really wanted to share this with people. Um, and it actually took her a long time to decide to share this story. It was a very personal event, a very personal thing that happened to her. So uh, I wanted to take the time to interview her and get it on record and, and get that to you so you could hear this amazing story of what happened to Helen. And uh, I just hope that it, it kind of energizes you, helps you understand a few things about God and who he is and um, how he reaches out and touches our lives sometimes. Um, so with that, here's Helen's interview I call A Brush With Heaven. Um, okay. So Helen, welcome to the Bible Scribe channel and to this video. It's good to have you and I'm really excited to hear this story that you're going to tell us. Uh, so I'm going to kind of step back. I may ask a question or two, but I'm going to let you tell this story because I think God kind of gave it to you and essentially told you you needed to share it. So I'm going to let you do that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me mm -hmm. and giving me a platform to share it. Um, yeah, it's it's just, just recently really I, I kind of feel that... Um, God put it on my heart to share it. I know I think with everybody going through these dark times, um, right. I just feel that perhaps this story will uh, encourage other Christians, you know, that that God really does um, see us all. And um, because I know sometimes I, I've had particularly difficult times in the past where, um, you know, sometimes your faith, wavers and you know times are hard and and I just feel that this is a story that happened to me some time ago that I cling to in those moments really that I always draw on and so I just thought you know what I, I'm being selfish keeping it to myself so I thought the time <laughs> time had come for me to share it so well we're excited to hear it thank you for sharing yeah. So, yeah so it, it started it happened in May of 2013 um my husband and I came to LA with his work and uh we were staying for uh, an extended period in fact uh 3 months and um we booked an Airbnb in Santa Monica in uh California which is it's just outside it's probably about 10 miles out of Hollywood and um we uh, booked a property there. It was kind of like a, a 1940s art deco. I'll give you some details because it kind of just, um, it, it'll make sense later. Okay, why sure. I'm giving you these details. Yeah. Um, so it was a 1940s kind of art deco, like a, like a post-war craftsman style home. So it was, you know, it was, it, it had much of like all the original fixed fixtures, like the dark wood and like a cast iron bath and it, you know you really very much when you walked in just it was like walking back in time sounds beautiful it was really beautiful yeah yeah and um uh it had a covered porch at the front with a swing and it had an enclosed grass yard at the front and like these thick bushes about shoulder height um and a small iron gate that stood between kind of like as a boundary between the house and the road. So it was very private. And um, we were thinking, great, this is going to be a fantastic place to stay, you know, while we're there. Um, so the, the house was um, on a busy residential area. It was in walking distance to the stores and the coffee shops. And there was a school just up the road. So you'd often see parents taking their kids to school and dog walkers and there was always cars regularly zipping by and you know it was just there was always a lot of activity on that street um and there was never really a quiet moment so you know it was it was just a great place to be and I could walk to the stores and things so you know it was just all great mm. looking forward to being there yeah but <laughs> and there was a but <laughs> but um once we we the first day we got there and we walked in i mean straight away and this is one of those things where you can there was kind of like how would i put this an anonymous like a a feeling 
that things just felt felt unusual in the house almost like I, I just felt a little bit unnerved and I thought mm. you know perhaps it's an old property and you kind of just chalk it off to that and I really didn't give it too much thought after that to be honest I was like you yeah, know we're just going to enjoy our stay here so now, do you mean unusual in the sense that just the, mm. the property got to you or something felt wrong? Something felt wrong, David, yeah. yeah. Something felt off. And, wow. and also, um, my husband and I, we, we didn't communicate anything to each other at the time. But we it was after the fact that we chatted about it. And like, yeah, there was just, we both had similarly thought that there was something just off about the place. It had a, mm. an atmosphere about it. Wow. But again, you know, it's not something you can uh, strictly put your finger on. Right. Um, and it was just one of those brief fleeting thoughts that you have and you just kind of brush it off. Um, so, yeah, so that that was the initial impression of the place. And <laughs> um, I just want to preface this as well as uh, before we'd come to uh, L.A., um, I'd had a whole raft of health problems which I was still dealing with when we got to Los Angeles mm. and plus they'd had there'd been an event that had happened um which had left me um not in a great place and so meaning emotionally yeah yeah, yeah. okay I was pretty low uh yeah. suffering w with depression and just feeling quite hopeless about things Wow. And at that point in time, I would say that I was really grappling with my faith at that time. Uh, I was coming, I mean, in hindsight, now I look back and I think I was actually coming back to God at that period. Um, and I was in the early stages of that process. Wow. Yeah. Um, but so I was just, I was listening to lots of sermons and I was reading my Bible at that time a lot really just searching for answers um at that time and um so it was just it was just a very emotional period yeah and um and of course coming to LA for three but it wasn't the best timing as you know leaving family behind and things your support network has gone for that period and so it was just it was just a tricky period for me emotionally and um but I was trying to you know be optimistic about things and you try and put you know put one foot in front of the other which was you know just trying to get on with it yeah um so the first thing and it's a little dark to start with this story but it ends really beautifully and <laughs> so i just want to say uh oh you're scaring me now here we go <laughs> um so uh there was kind of a few un unusual things that happened in this house um the first thing was, which has never happened to me before, and it's never happened since, is uh, my husband waking up one morning and my husband telling me uh, that I'd, I'd been sleepwalking the night before. Wow. And that he'd woken up and I was stood uh, facing the wall and removing clothes from the dresser at the side uh, from a, a folding chair and putting them on a, a dresser at the side and he he said to me well, what are you doing because it's like three o'clock in the morning I didn't respond and um and I just turned around and got into bed now in and of itself you know you would think okay you know these things can happen well like I said I've I've never done that before and I've never done it since yeah that's odd yeah yes so that was kind of the first unusual event that happened there that was just out of the ordinary and then the second thing was, um, like I said, I was quite low at the time and my husband was out most of the day, uh, most days. So I was in the house on my own most of the time and um, I wasn't sleeping too well at night. So I, I could be, you know, I just wasn't getting a good night's sleep. I'd, I'd be up until the early hours. So sometimes in the day I would go back and try and catch some sleep. On this particular day, I'd gone back to try and grab an hour and uh, I was lying there and um, I could swear that I, that, that I heard feet walking in the bedroom, huh. like a shuffling sound. Right. But again, I knew I wasn't in a great place at the time and I thought, did I, am I imagining this? <laughs> Is of this, course. You know, I, um, 
no, I don't want to go there. I don't want to think about that. And, you know, I just kind of, again, chalked it off to I'm not in a great place. So, mm. you know, just move on from that. So it turns out it was only actually just moving forward here. After we actually left the property, my husband told me he didn't know that this had happened to me. But it, after the fact, he told me that one night he himself had woken up early hours of the morning to someone walking around in the bedroom. Wow. And he said he looked, he literally kind of sat up in bed to look around because it, it was literally feet. He heard walking on the on the wooden floor yeah and he said it was it wasn't one of those experiences where you're not sure he's like am i hearing that no he said it was definitely feet on the floor right and it was around the bed and he said he looked he couldn't see anybody but he could hear it and it was there that was just someone walking up and down around the bed wow. and he said that he was so terrified he just literally put his head back under the covers and he said, I just daren't move. He says, and inexplicably, he fell asleep somehow, which I believe in hindsight now is quite common uh, that people do fall asleep in these moments. But um, yeah, mm. he said, uh, so he was pretty freaked out about that. And of course, he, he knew I wasn't in a great place at the time, so he didn't tell me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> he was like, yes, we are. Not, I am not going to tell my wife this. This is not going to make being in this house great. Well, and that makes sense, too, because both of you are having these weird kind of experiences, but you didn't know if the other one was or not. So you're kind of yeah. like, I don't want to scare them or say right. something stupid. So, <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Oh, so the next thing that happened, and, and, and again, I, even though... I felt uncomfortable at times and I was spiritually in a, in a vulnerable place at the time. Um, I felt quite protected oddly enough when I look back, when I think, I think I, I now I think, my goodness, I think I'd be freaking out. But at the time I just, I think I really somehow just felt protected. Did um, you feel at the time that was God or you just, you didn't really understand it? I didn't understand it at the mm. time. Mm -hmm. Now I would say that was God, definitely. Wow. Okay, yeah. Um, so the next thing to happen was, like I said, often I would be, um, I, I just didn't sleep well at night. And to the front of the house where the porch is, they had a TV room area there. And um, it was around 3 a.m. in the morning and I was sat in the TV room, which is next to the front door. And um, my husband, who smokes, uh, would often leave his cigarettes at the front door and uh, take a cigarette and go and stand on the porch to have a cigarette. That's what he would do. Mm -hmm. Well, this particular night, I'm watching TV, 3 a.m., and there is a light on in the hallway. And I hear feet on the wooden floor, and I see um, the shadow of what I think is my husband under the door <laughs> and had no reason to not think it was him. Um, and he was, I could just hear the, he was moving around and I could see the shadow and I could hear his feet on the floor. And I'm thinking, what's he doing? And it was like minutes passed and he still hadn't opened that front door, which I was expecting him to do. And um, it just never happened. So I'm like, what's he doing? So I get up and open the door and there's no one there. <laughs> well, you can see from um, that front porch area, if you look back down to the back of the house where the bedroom was, you can see you have a clear view all the way to the back of the house. So there was no way in the time that I got up and opened that door that he could have got all the way up to the back of the house without me seeing him. Yeah. So I knew straight away that at that point I did, I was like, oh my goodness. So I quickly rushed down to the back of the house and went into the bedroom and he is fast asleep under the covers. And so I knew it wasn't him. And at that wow. point, it was kind of just confirmation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was right. like, oh, great. This is the last thing I need right now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And we still had at this point, I think we still had another, at least another two months in this house. So, <laughs> yeah, 
So I was like, oh, I don't think I can do it. This is this this is not pleasant. I don't think if this is where we're at now, what's it going to be like in another month's time and two months? Is the activity is this activity going to pick up even more? Right, right. So at this point, I'm like, but hey, I've got personal issues right now, and uh, you know, I just spiritually i'm searching and i'm reading the bible and i'm looking for answers and all of these things and that that's where my focus was so one particular i think this is two or three days later after this event my my husband's out in the day again he's at work and um and i think oh it's a beautiful day i'll go and sit on the porch so i get a, i take a drink out with me and i go and sit on the porch and i'm just feeling this day just really really in a bad spot um just just feeling really hopeless about mm. the future and hopeless about the past and just spiritually broken would yeah. be the best way to put it right so i'm just sat there on this porch and as usual, all the activities going on, you know, the cars zipping by and you can hear the kids at the road and people are, you know, zipping, walking by with their dogs and things. And then all of a sudden, and then, and I'll do my best to try and articulate what this was like. It was like um, all the sounds um, of the birds, of the, the road sounds, the cars, the children, like someone just pressed a switch and all the sound went out. Mm. It was like, the best way I can describe it would be in a soundproofed room. I don't know if you've ever been in one. Yeah. Where it's soundproofed and there's literally, it's just like that that dead silence. Right. Well, straight away, I just, it, I think I was just processing what I was hearing at first. I was just like, what on earth? And and you were outside when this happened, right? I'm out. I'm outside on the porch. Yes. Wow. Swing. And um, and then the next thing to happen, and this is all, and I couldn't even tell you how long that was that I sat there and processed that it had suddenly gone, just all the sound had gone. Right. Your conception of time was just yeah. messed up. You had no idea. Right. It was. It was surreal. Wow. Really. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing I hear, a choir, like a Baroque style, like late, like that kind of, um, let me think, like late 16th, early 17th hundreds, Baroque style choirs, like those classical choirs from that period that you'd hear in the great cathedrals. Uh -huh. And it was hundreds, male and female, voices, hundreds of them. And they sang hallelujah. Wow. In this, in that style, that very old, uh, just, I can't, it's so hard to describe it. And I've actually searched in the past for some of these old, you know, like recordings of those old choirs and things like that to try and find something that was similar to it. To right. Um, but I really haven't found anything because it was hundreds of voices. Mm. And it was so beautiful. It was angelic. It was surreal. It was, and it just encompassed everything around me. And it was hallelujah. And they sang it three times. And it wasn't a quick hallelujah. It was like this kind of long drawn out hallelujahs in that style, that Baroque style. And, um, and in this moment when you heard this, like, was there something running through your head? Like uh, you had a thought of who this was or what it was, or did you just kind of experience it first? I just kind of experienced it first. Yeah. I, I actually had, at the time when I was having my drink, I had my head down. Uh, I just remember lifting my head up in this whole experience and looking up. And I'm just experiencing it. I, I'm just in awe. I, I can't believe what I'm experiencing and what I'm hearing. You know, the hairs on the back of my neck were stood up. <laughs> and it was so spectacular. I mean, it was so loud, the sound, but mm. not, not in a scary way. It was just stunning to hear. It was ethereal. Did it feel more as if instead of hearing it 
from outside that it was kind of running through you? Like, I mean, it was everywhere. Was that kind of a good explanation or no? I wouldn't say it was running through me, but it encompassed me like a hug. Oh, <laughs> like wow. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, it was warm. I felt the emotions that, that I felt from it were of just peace, immense joy. I just felt so joyful and so amazed because I mean, and keep in mind, I mean, you're still processing at this point. I, I think I was just experiencing it in that moment. I was just feeling it in that moment. Well, sure. And and you said you had been in kind of a dark place that day. Oh, and so it changed yes. everything at that moment. Yes. Wow. Yes. And, and so it did it three times. And the hallelujah finished. And then it was like the sound, just somebody switched the sound back on. And a car zipped by, a woman was literally there just, just at the front of the house, in front of the hedge, passing by the, the iron gate with a dog. And I just, at that point, I, I stand up and walk off the porch down the path. And I'm looking at the lady thinking, she, well, she has, she has to have just experienced what <laughs> I just experienced. <laughs> right. And I'm looking for her to react or to look at me in some way. And I see her and she's actually, she's just looking at her phone whilst walking the dog. She's just, she's <laughs> looking at her phone. I'm thinking, yeah, this, she's not just heard what I heard. Wow. And the cars there and the, and there's bird sounds and everything. It was just, I was back into reality at that point. And I wish point and sat back down and, and I knew then I, and I just, that's when I began to cry at that point. <laughs> and, um, you know, I just was so amazed that I think it's, I mean, without going into too much details of what was, you know, I felt like I knew then at that point that God saw me hmm. personally. And I'm not, also, I just couldn't understand why me. I mean, I spent a lot of time, many years after, even now I still think, why me? Why, why did God give me that gift? And if it, if it's not perhaps to share it now with you and other Christians, um, but for me personally, it just from that point on, really, I mean, I would say that was the real start of me really understanding that God was who I thought He was, and that I had a personal relationship with Him, and that hopelessness. Hmm. Well, it, 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 in that in that second, it, it was gone. Wow. And um, because I just knew then there was, there he was. He's watching us. He sees us all, you know. And and I think because, you know, we'd been experiencing, I guess it's the perfect example of spiritual warfare in many ways. You know, if you think to have experienced the darkness in that house that was scary and that horrible experiences and then to uh, have this experience direct from God like that just goes to show, you know, there is spiritual warfare happening all around us. I mean, that's really where the war is happening. And um, we can be so in the material, you know, we can be so, it's very hard to remember that we we are spiritual beings and that after this life there is everlasting life and sometimes you know our hopelessness exists because we don't often uh realize that especially if you're, you're you know you're not a christian I, I can only imagine what life is like without god i mean i can't imagine my life without god for that reason you know if you just purely believe that life is here on earth in the in the material in the flesh then it's easy to be hopeless it's so easy to feel hopeless i think that's so true so I, i'm just curious so you interpreted the other events as definite mm. spiritual warfare um well, and, and did it continue at all after this well, experience we left <laughs> we okay left. 
<laughs> so you weren't there much longer after that, huh? No, we managed to, thank goodness, uh, the owner was very gracious and we kind of gave our excuses and uh, we were able to, we actually were only there one month and we left mm. and found somewhere else and everything was fine after that. Wow. So, um, yeah, we both, at that point, we we both, we, we wanted to go at that point. <laughs> right. We, we were gone and happy to go. Um. But if anything, it just served for me anyway at that time as a as an example of what is going on out there spiritually. You know, there is a there is darkness out there, right? And um, however, we cannot forget that that God has already won that war, and He does see us, and we are protected in Christ. We are protected as Christians. And I couldn't agree with you more. I, I just, I'm struck by the event and the occurrence. And it feels like, honestly, that God opened a window to heaven and showed you something oh. so that you were aware, you know? And it's just like, it's like he said, you know, Helen, my daughter, I want you to understand. And, and he took you out of that darkness yes, and helped you in a way that you'll never forget. And I mean, I can't yeah. even... Yes. I can't even think of another way to interpret what happened. You know, it, it's so yeah. special. So, wow. I know, it, <laughs> it was truly a beautiful experience and um, something that I have, ne I will never forget. And again, I, I say I still, you know, when I'm ha you're having a tough day or a tough week and things just seem dark, I go back to that moment often. And I bet you, when you think about it, you can still hear that sound. Can't oh, you? yes. <laughs> I, and, and, you know, I, I, I think it's only my husband and my parents. So you're the, the next person to hear this story. So I, I don't, oh. you know, I don't just liberally go around telling that story. Um, but I, I just, it's so precious to me. It was, it's just one. Of, and I was actually quite concerned for a long time that I wouldn't be able to, uh, find the right words, you know, to articulate it in the best way possible. I didn't want to, um, uh, you know, I just wanted, I know how what the experience was and sometimes words just aren't enough. Well, so I'm yeah. kind of always just hesitant to to just quickly share that story and throw it, that story and throw it out there. And, you know, so, yeah, I, I mean, I hope that people, you know, that have been able to communicate it there. Well, I think people will understand. I think uh, especially, you know, what we have to understand as human beings is that sometimes our experiences are not ones we can just explain and expect people to really understand. And yeah. so I've come to the point where I don't ever judge a person's experience. To me, it sounds like that's all between you and God. And I, I, I'm a little jealous because it sounds <laughs> wonderful. And, and I'm just glad that he dealt with you in that way. Uh, for such a good purpose and has brought you so far because of that and other things in your life. And I, I'm just yeah. excited about that for you, Helen. But I hope the people that are watching do uh, mm -hmm. understand that God, he reaches out and touches each of us in the way we need mm -hmm. at the time we need. Yeah. And, and I do hope that people see from your testimony here that, like you're mm -hmm. saying, the spiritual part of our lives the spiritual mm -hmm. aspect is the real aspect mm -hmm. and that we when we don't act in that knowledge and understanding of that 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 we're kind of mm -hmm. we're kind of have a facade it's not real we're kind of playing a game and, and unless we realize that spiritual aspect is the number one component of our lives mm -hmm. and that's why we find value in other people because they're a spirit just like us and mm -hmm. we have this connection um, and the, the whole point is to bring all of us towards God in the end, right? And so, mm. um, yes. yeah, I do hope people realize that. And uh, this is an yeah. incredible testimony. Thank you so much for giving oh, it. Thank you. No, thank um, you for letting me share. And um, I've been waiting, you know, for uh, the moment to come that I, I knew the day would come. I knew it would come when I go, you're <laughs> going to have to put it out there, Helen, at some point. <laughs> so I just felt the time was was right, really. So, well, I'm yeah. sure there's a reason for that too. And so I'm really excited that you decided to do this with me. And I, I feel privileged and honored by the way. And I, um, I hope you realize that there will be 
probably thousands of people that hear this story very soon. And, and that, I hope, is a very big encouragement to many people. Yes, that's my hope. Um, yeah, I hope so. so. Praise yeah. God. I mean, maybe that's why he gave you the experience as well, not just yes. for you, but to reach out to others as well. So I, who knows? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> it's so exciting when this stuff happens and we can, I just experience our God, you know, in a way yes. like this. So. Yes. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Helen. And I just appreciate you. And I think with that, we'll end the testimony part here. Yes. Thank you, David. Take care. So that was really an amazing testimony from Helen. And I really appreciated her doing this. Um, it, it's not easy to know that, you know, hundreds or thousands of people might see this kind of thing, a, a very personal experience like this. But, you know, there was a few things that came to mind while we were talking, or actually after we we talked and after she shared this experience with me, I started thinking more about it. For one, it, it, it really doesn't surprise me thinking back on those negative spiritual or maybe demonic experiences that she had in that, that house uh, that she was renting because actually that area, Los Angeles, uh, is known for a lot of different very dark, very negative demonic things like um, murders, shootings. Uh, it actually, during the 60s and 70s, was the foundational spot for many satanic cults. Uh, it's just miles away from where Charles Manson and his family clan murdered a bunch of people in Sharon Tate's house. Um, there's a lot of things like that right around the area of Los Angeles and inside it that um, would definitely set a precedent for this kind of demonic activity. And especially since that came at a time when Helen was already struggling. She was struggling emotionally, spiritually, working on herself. Uh, and then God gave her this experience. And, and that experience just sounds amazing to me. I, I'm just, um, it's amazing that God can give us that kind of an experience when we need it the most. And uh, he really does do that and helps us understand, I think, the understanding that Helen gained from this about the spiritual aspect of her life being so important. That's something we all need to think about. We all need to consider. Because uh, as we talked about, when we have that kind of heavenly perspective, and that, that's what the New Testament talks about, having a, a Christ-centered perspective or being uh, thinking on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth, having our minds set on the things above, having our minds on Christ and on God, uh, that can't be overstated because what it does, it helps us see things from the spiritual perspective and understand what's really important in these, this life and what's not important. And it honestly helps you with your relationships with other people more because you realize, well, that person is struggling because you know they're human just like me. And we are bound in this flesh right now with, with desires, with faults and failures. And so it helps you get a good perspective that, well, they need help too. So why don't I reach out? You know, that kind of, that kind of mindset uh, is so valuable, especially in the Christian community. We need to have that spiritual mindset, the same one that God does. He sees us down here as just children who are going about their lives some of them going off track, and all he wants is for us to get back on track. And so if we can kind of have that mindset and, and stay, quote, in the spirit, then it can only make the way that we interact with other people around us better, and it can only make us better as individuals, and it can only help, as it did for Helen, help our mindset about our own selves, bring our self-esteem up, because in God's eyes, we are valuable. Uh, and it's just amazing that in this moment in Helen's life, God reached out and showed her exactly how valuable she was to him. So just know that God would do that with each and every one of us, but he only reaches out to us each in our own special way at, at a time when we need it. Um, so you or I may not have had that experience because we're not Helen, and she needed it in that moment. 
Um, but just realize what that means for both Helen and for all of us, that this experience in this life is primarily a spiritual experience. And we need to understand that and have the mindset of God when we reach out to other people and of our own selves and see our value and see the value in other people. So I think that's what I take from this. Uh, I know that this will probably touch everybody in a different way. It's, it's a very amazing story. And I really appreciate, again, Helen being willing to share it with us. So thank you for your attention and God bless. <music>